Good morning, church. What a beautiful morning it is. As we come this morning, we're going to continue our summer series from the Old Testament, the book of Genesis. We're going to talk about Joseph. Joseph reveals his identity from Genesis, the 45th chapter. Please receive the word of the Lord. Joseph could stand it no longer. There were many people in the room, and he said to his attendants, Out, all of you. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him, and word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer, and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years, and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. And he is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and tell him, this is what your son Joseph says, God has made me master over all the land of Egypt. So come down to me immediately. You can live in the region of Goshen, where you can be near me with your children and grandchildren, your flocks and your herds and everything you own. I will take care of you there, for there are still five years of famine ahead of us. Otherwise, you and your household and all your animals will starve. Then Joseph added, Look, you can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that I am really Joseph. Go tell my father of my honored position here in Egypt. Describe for him everything you have seen, and then bring my father here quickly. Weeping with joy, he embraced Benjamin, and Benjamin did the same. Then Joseph kissed each of his brothers and wept over them, and after that they began talking freely with him. May God bless his word to our hearts this day. Well, where do you go when you're not quite sure what something means? You go to Webster's Dictionary. Do they still have dictionaries, or do you have to Google it? I went to the dictionary, actually a hardbound book that I have in my library. Webster's defines the word forgive as to give up resentment against or the desire to punish, to pardon an offense or an offender. Well, that sounds really simple, doesn't it? But it isn't. It's one of the hardest things in our human experience to do. Today we're going to focus on the story of Joseph and his willingness to forgive his brothers. We'll see that Joseph continued through his test to turn his test into his testimony, to turn his mess into his message, as we talked of last week. Last week we saw Joseph as the favorite son of his father, Jacob. The eleventh of the twelve boys, Joseph was the favorite. And Jacob made no bones about it. He gave him a, a coat of many colors. He made it known to all that Joseph was his favorite. Even more than that, Joseph knew that he was dad's favorite. He told everybody that dad loves me the most. Remember the dreams he had where he shared with his brothers that they would bow down and worship him. 
Well, it doesn't make for good family dynamics, does it? Finally, Joseph's brothers had had enough. Joseph went out to the fields to check on them. His father sent him, and they said, it's time to take care of Joseph. And so they conspired to kill him. Today we pick up the story as his brothers had thrown Joseph in the dry well and left him to die. But eventually an opportunity came and the brothers went back and they pulled Joseph up out of the dry well and they sold him to the passing merchants, slave traders. How many of you have had a brother or sister that you really would like to sell at some point in time? I wouldn't have even sold him. I'd have just given him away. Joseph was sold to slave traders. And these merchants, these slave traders, took him to Egypt. And there they turned a profit and they sold Joseph. And Joseph found himself as a servant, a slave, in the home of Potiphar, who was an officer of Pharaoh. Potiphar was the captain of Pharaoh's guard, a man with great energy, great capacity, a man who was revered, a man next to Pharaoh. And it says that things went well for Joseph. He prospered in Potiphar's home. He was soon put in charge of all of Potiphar's affairs. But there was trouble brewing. Potiphar's wife had eyes for Joseph. Do you remember the story? She tried time and time again to seduce Joseph. Sounds like a modern day, a days of our lives. And here is Joseph pushing back, never wanting anything to do with this woman. But one day he found himself alone in the house and she forced herself on Joseph. And he chose to run, to flee. But in doing so, he left his coat behind. And in anger, Potiphar's wife wanted to teach Joseph a lesson. And she accused him of attacking her, of raping her. And she used his coat as evidence against him. And the Bible said, and Joseph's master was furious and he had Joseph arrested and put in the prison where the king's prisoners were kept. And there he stayed. But the Lord was with Joseph and blessed him so that the jailer was pleased with him. He put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and made him responsible for everything that was done in the prison. The jailer did not have to look after anything for which Joseph was responsible because the Lord was with Joseph and made him succeed in everything he did. Put yourself in Joseph's place twice as a young man. Joseph has been gravely wronged. First, his brothers want to kill him They sell him into slavery. And now his master, Potiphar's wife, has falsely accused him of something he did not do. And he finds himself in prison. What would you do? Most of us would be crying out, Why, Lord? Why? Why me? What have I done to deserve this? Perhaps we would have turned our backs on God angry, unwilling to accept what is happening to us. But not Joseph. It says even in prison, he prospered. Falsely in prison, Joseph chose to make the best of a bad situation. And the Bible said, and God blessed Even in prison, Joseph found an opportunity to help others. You remember the story of the prison? Pharaoh's cupbearer 
and Pharaoh's baker had both fallen out of favor with Pharaoh and they had been put in prison. And both had dreams while they were in prison. Dreams that haunted them and they could not understand. But Joseph was able to share with them, was able to interpret their dreams. Joseph told them correctly what would happen, what their dreams were about. The cupbearer was restored and went back to Pharaoh's court. But the baker was executed. Sometime later, as Joseph was still in prison, Pharaoh had a dream. Joseph had been in prison for two years when Pharaoh had a dream. A a dream no one could interpret for him. And suddenly, the cupbearer in Pharaoh's court remembered Joseph and how he had correctly interpreted his dream. Now Joseph is in prison for two years waiting for God. He said to the cupbearer, remember me. Two years. How many of you have patience to wait? Oh, that is hard. So Joseph was cleaned up and brought to Pharaoh to interpret his dream. Pharaoh had a dream that seven fat cows were followed by seven skinny cows. And Joseph told him of the coming years in Egypt. Seven prosperous years with rain and abundant crops, followed by seven years of drought with little or no crops. And Pharaoh recognized Joseph's wisdom as he interpreted his dream. And so Pharaoh, God's heart was moved, and Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all of Egypt so that Joseph might store up enough food during the good years to provide for the people during the years of famine. Our scripture today finds Joseph tending the grain supplies of all of Egypt. The first seven years were prosperous. The barns were built and filled with the plentiful supplies of food. But now it has started into the years of drought. And in the second year of the seven years of drought, Jacob and his family were starving in the land of Canaan. And so Jacob sent ten of his eleven sons to Egypt. We'd heard they have grain. Go and buy grain so that we might survive. And when the brothers came, they met with Joseph. And Joseph recognized his brothers. But none of the brothers recognized Joseph. They didn't know who he was. Do you remember the beauty of the story? I hope you read your one-year Bible. It was great stories. Joseph sells the brothers the grain. But then Joseph tests the brothers. Do you remember? He took their their payment for the grain and he put it back in their sacks. And so on the way home, the brothers opened the sacks and they realized the payment was there. And they thought, oh no, we are in deep trouble. They're afraid of what Joseph might do to them. So they come back for more grain and and Joseph forces his brothers to return home and bring their youngest brother, Benjamin. Benjamin was born just at or about the time that Joseph disappeared or supposedly had been killed by a wild animal. And Joseph said, bring Benjamin. That's the only way I'll sell you more grain. But the brothers knew if they brought Benjamin, if something happened to Benjamin, their father Jacob wouldn't be able to survive it. He'd already lost one son, Joseph. But the brothers brought Benjamin. Joseph tested his brothers. And his brothers brought Benjamin. And now Joseph has come to the point where his heart 
is broken. He's filled with love and compassion for his brothers. The very ones who threatened to kill him, who sold him to slavery some 20 years earlier. But we see that God has worked in Joseph's heart. Joseph is ready to forgive and to be reconciled with his family. Beautiful story, isn't it? But that's, that's not the way it's supposed to be. What would the world say? The world would say, Joseph, you've got them right where you want them. You can do whatever you want with these evil brothers of yours. Throw them in prison. Put them to death. The world says, get justice. Justice needs to be done. But Joseph said to his brothers, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be upset or blame yourselves because you sold me here. It was really God who sent me ahead of you to save people's lives. After all that Joseph has been through, Joseph never lost his confidence in the goodness of his Lord. He said, it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. He said, it was not you who sent me here, but God. Pretty powerful statement, isn't it? How many of us have blamed God for the challenges in our lives? How many of us want to blame somebody because it sure can't be my fault? Joseph's heart had been touched. He was left to die by his brothers. He was falsely accused and spent years in prison. And yet, Joseph loved God more than he blamed God for what had happened. Joseph was wise enough to realize there comes a time when we must forgive and we must move on. It's hard to forgive someone who has wronged us. It's hard to forgive someone who meant evil against us. It's hard to, to break with the past. But that's exactly what Joseph did. Maybe Joseph wanted revenge when he was first sold into slavery. I can only imagine what he felt. Maybe he thought of ways to get even. But as the years passed, he saw God's hand at work in his life. And his anger subsided and his love for God trumped the pull of the world. Joseph forgave his brothers and they forgave him. And a beautiful reconciliation took place. How many of you are praying for reconciliation in our nation today? Folks, we are broken. We are lost. We are in a, a sea of who did it and whose fault is it and I want to blame you and I want it my way and I want all of this where God said, forgive and be reconciled to one another. We are not Democrats or Republicans or Independents or black or white or, or red or green or brown or whatever color. We are people of God. And God says, forgive one another and be reconciled together. Pharaoh invited Jacob and his family to settle on the best land in all of Egypt. And God's people prosper. 
Mahatma Gandhi once said, the weak, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Speaks volumes, doesn't it? Speaks volumes of what's happening in our nation today. The weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is an attribute of the strong. The question this morning is, are you strong enough to forgive? God's love for us is so great that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. God looks at Barry and He sees the sin in Barry's life. And God says, I forgive you. God looks at you and looks at your heart, looks at every thought, word, and deed, and action of your life, and said, I love you, and I forgive you. Come and walk with me. The cross of Calvary said, I love you. I forgive you. At least you think that God remembers. The Bible says He removes the sin as far as the east is from the west. You know, I have a tendency to have too good a memory. And when I've been hurt, I remember. Lord, help me to forget. Help me to understand that what is the past is the past and the future is in Your hands, O Lord. Joseph looked into the eyes of his brothers, the very ones who wanted to kill him, the ones who caused him so much pain, and he said, I forgive you. Just as God looks into our hearts and sees our sinfulness and our disobedience, and God chooses to love us and forgiveness. Hard question this morning. Is there someone you need to forgive? When you get to be my age, I've done enough things in my life, there's a lot of people that I need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe some of you. Maybe I've said something I shouldn't have. Maybe I've done something I shouldn't have. And I seek forgiveness. That's the message this morning, that we are called to be as Joseph, to be willing to forgive and then go on and to forget. It's a hard message this morning. It's a hard message to seek forgiveness and it's even harder to give forgiveness. Is there someone you've wronged and you need to seek that forgiveness? Do it now. Have you reached the place where where you need Jesus Christ? And you need to kneel at the altar and say, Lord, forgive me. Heal me. Walk with me. I accept you, Lord, as my Savior. My prayer is that like Joseph, we'll find the strength to forgive and to seek forgiveness. Amen. As we close in prayer, I'm going to give you a time of quiet. Wherever you are, I just pray that you will take a moment and open your heart to God's forgiving grace. Open your heart and ask God to help you forgive or to seek forgiveness forgiveness for something you've done. Would you quietly pray with me? Lord, we approach the throne of grace as sinners. Lord, we have done things that we're not proud of. We have been hurt by others and sometimes we refuse to forgive. 
So Lord, as Joseph, help us. Help us to see clearly the love that you gave to us, that we might give that love to others. Forgive us, heal us, restore us, O oh Lord. Amen. As you go through this week, I pray that God will disturb your heart. I pray that God will bring to your heart a, a desire to forgive, to start anew, to be fresh, to be honest, to be open. And may God bless you this week. In this journey, the journey where Joseph forgave his brothers. May God forgive us and may God help us to forgive others. Amen.